process for that. That's cool. All right, how long have you been studying? A couple years. A couple years? So you know you're an Israelite and you know the Lord's name? What's his name? Uh, his name is Yahweh. Uh, What's right. his son's name? I thought his name was, I thought his son's name was Yahweh Shai. Right. Right. You're gonna have a problem. You told me you've been studying a few years and you ain't know the names. I'm gonna say who you praying to then. You know, those names are important. That's why I have to stress them. Right, but, yeah. Okay, come, come. So, um, all right, you know, we Great Millstone, so that's GMS for short. Right, yeah. 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 So on YouTube, just type in GMS St. Louis, come right up. Uh, then we got individual channels ourselves, but we come out here every Sunday. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we do. Yeah. By Sunday. Mm -hmm. By Sunday. You work best for us. Schedule wise. <laughs> so, do you know what the market of beast is? No, I don't. You don't? Who do you listen to? Um. Uh, what's his name? Uh. It's, uh. It's Kari. Zakari. It's a one Zakari and, and another one. So one of the with, uh, Zabak. Yeah, Zabak. Yeah. So, so, so one of the uh, the ones from one west, which is good, they'll tell you the Israelites, but there is a difference. With those two, okay? That's why doctrine is important. And who you listen to. Sakari teaches that the mark of the beast is the RFID microchip. You heard of that? Yeah, where it's supposed to have all your information, your social security, yeah, right all that type of stuff. It's important. Okay, because yeah. that's the truth. That is what the market of beast is. But Priest Abak, on the other hand, will laugh at that and say, no, he's not talking about that. So that's why it's important that you listen to the correct teachers, because that can cause the... Uh, I mean, beast. I never heard his stance on it. No, well, I'm his telling his you, on yeah, that's, that's his stance. He does, they don't, what do you uh, think it is? Then? Spiritual. Oh, okay. Sin, that's what they'll, that's what they'll say. So why the mark? No, because that, that would make sense to me. So that wouldn't make sense? No. That's what I'm saying. But because you got people, people just talk about a relationship so toward the end. People have been sitting for, for a long time. Exactly. Our point exactly. But that's what they teach. But it, it, it matters because you have Israelites who listen to multiple different groups. And then if I ask them, what's the mark of the beast? And because they know that this group doesn't teach it, but this group does, and they want to stand in the middle, they'll just say, but well, I don't want to talk about it. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay, good, good. So yeah, here in Great Millstone, we actually believe we, we teach 100% truth. We teach the truth to 100%. We actually don't group that can say that confidently. And it's not out of being bold or proud or anything like that. It's just, that's what we believe. And part of the main controversial topics, like I mentioned, the chip being the biggest one, that the market of beast is the chip and it's around the corner. You know what I'm saying? It is It is here. It's actually already here. It's staring you in the face. It's staring you in the face. And all the pandemic they and all the- They've been talking about it. Sure. They've been talking about it. Of course. They're rolling it out. More than talk. He breaks. You know what I'm saying? Bricks. Yep, the, the WEF, uh, World Economic Forum, World Economic Forum. They talking about it, and we're here. To, we're screaming loud. The chip is coming. The market is coming. Why then you have other groups? No, nah, that ain't it. Well, that's that's confusion, right? It's so that's hard though. And in fact, give me a first John chapter four. And our job, like individuals like yourself, uh, is just you know fill fill out brothers in the spirit, you know, just to see you know where where you at. Because this is, you know, the, the chip is a big deal, okay? And that's just, those are the major doctrine differences. Um, but there's other things as well, you know? So there's plenty of times where Jake will come up and say, I want to join the camp, I want to join the camp. But then we may not agree on the doctrine. And the scripture says we got to all uh, speak, speak, speak the same, same thing. thing. Right, so, but there's one doctrine that always had trouble with. So what y'all think about regeneration? Okay, give me uh, Malachi 4. Malachi 4. You don't believe in it? Nah. Well, bro, you're right. It's true. The book of St. Matthew 13 and verse 16, it reads, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakak Wadash, double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone for teaching this truth that's gone all around the earth shallow wine to the hopeful elect out there you should brother i tell you why by uh back with a quick lesson 
All right, and this lesson is going to be based on that clip we saw from from camp this past weekend. All right, where we had a young Jake come up and um, <clears throat> talk about uh, how he wanted to join the camp. Okay, and you saw the clip, and by the time things concluded, you know we see that this. This young man is uh, wavering, okay, and not sound in, in faith, okay, and does not understand the doctrine. And what tripped him up was, you heard him say that one thing that he had a hard time with was the regeneration, okay, or reincarnation, all right? So what I'll do is I'll go back up here to... Uh, Matthew 13 and 10, and then we'll read down to 16 again, all right? So it goes on to say, Matthew 13 and 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables, right? For Yahushua was addressing a multitude, okay? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak God to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of the size which saith, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. But this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing. In their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. All right, so obviously in this text, there is a certain group of people that is to understand the gospel of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, and there is a certain group that is not to receive the understanding of the gospel of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, okay, of his own nations. Okay, which, as it says in verse 14, fulfills the prophecy in Esaias, which is Isaiah. Okay, now <clears throat> getting to this young man, he could not understand reincarnation. All right, and no matter how many scriptures, you can go and watch it. You know, I have it posted on the channel if you haven't watched it already. Um, you can go watch <clears throat> the camp lesson, okay, and hear everything he had to say. But no matter how many scriptures, you know, the brothers brought out, he just could not receive it, okay. And then he he goes on to actually try to act like he was going to teach us, okay. Um, so let's read this verse. This is Romans 3 and 3. And it reads, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Most High forbid, yea, let the Most High be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Okay, so no matter how much you try to break it down to somebody, if it's not given to them to understand it, they're not going to receive it, okay? Now, as we get, um, when you get closer to the end of the camp video where this young man leaves, and I was really questionable about him when he said that, you know, he had, as the brothers were also, um, said he'd been studying a couple of years, but he, could not come right out and say Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right? When the 
head brother asked him, what's the name of the Most High or what's the name of the Most High's son? Okay. And if you've been studying for two years, you you could if you don't know anything else, you know that right off the bat. Okay. And then at the same time, he had his beard marred up, right? And he had dreads or twists, whatever you want to call it. Either way, it was past his shoulder, okay? Um, so anyway, that made me just a little bit suspicious, but nonetheless, um, you know, as with all things, the spirit reveals all things before these people actually walk away. So um, we knew that, you know, there was some guile in this guy, okay? So there was a... This scripture here in John 9 was brought out by the brother Dawada, uh, uh, Dwight, Slaki, or Dwight. Um, and he tried to go into this as if he understood it better than we did, okay? So let's read this just a little bit. All right, this is John 9 and 1. And it reads, and as Jehovah shot passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Stop right there. It says he was blind from his birth. Okay. Uh, so he was born this way. Okay. So going on to verse two, it reads, and this, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? this man or his parents that he was born blind. He, he tried to say that the word born in a concordance, and it all depends on what concordance he read, right, which he did not share that information. But if you simply just go into the blue letter, it's going to tell you what the word means. Okay, as we scroll down, he tried to say that it was something what gave rise to him to be blind. The first verse told you that he was blind from birth. So, I mean, what part of that don't you understand? Right? But we're going into showing him examples in the scriptures of reincarnation. Okay? So, let's go to the word blind. Okay? And it looks like Ganeo. Ganeo. Okay? So when we open it up in the Strong's, what does it say? It says, to procreate properly of the father or by extension of the mother figuratively or what? Regenerate, to regenerate, to be born, to regenerate. It's really that simple. But see, it's not simple for those whom the Lord did not give to understand it. It says, bear, beget, be born, bring forth, conceive, be delivered of, right? I mean, what else are you looking for? Okay, it doesn't say anything about what, what brought the rise of his blindness, which was totally going off here to be, to be born, to be begotten of woman giving birth to children. It's really that simple. And he tried to say that that's not what that particular word in that verse meant. Okay? Which he was going off. He was wrong. So let's further uh, examine it. scripture here. All right? So let's go back to verse 2. And it says, And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parent, parents, that he was born blind? Because... In ancient times, in our heritage, in our culture, we understood regeneration or reincarnation, as they call it today, okay? We understood that spirits inhabit another body after a certain time, okay? After judgment, you live a life, you judge, you rest, and the Lord send you back in another body, Okay? So that's why the disciples asked, who did sin? Did this man sin in his prior life that the Lord put him back on the earth blind? Or did his parents do something that caused him? And, and the Lord is judging them, you know, and, and gave them a blind son. Okay? 
So that's what the disciples were asking Yahweh Shai. Okay? And and this young man, he couldn't, he couldn't get that. Alright? So now let's read on a little bit. Yahweh Shai answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of the Most High Yahweh, alright, should be made manifest in him. Right. The Lord used them for a purpose. Right? So that Yahweh Shai would, would heal him in this lifetime, right? And he get all praise to God by Shem Yahushai. You see, so the Lord used him, made him, had him born blind, if you will, just so Yahweh Shai could heal him in his life. Okay? That's essentially what's being said in verse 3. All right, verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he hath thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, Siloam which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore and washed and came seen. The neighbors therefore see in which that young man didn't read far enough down you know he just he thought he had something right so he thought he stumped us okay um and, and which he was totally wrong okay the neighbors therefore and they which before had seen him that he was blind said is not this he that sat and begged right so is this not the same blind man that was born blind? You see? Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Right. And he identified himself as saying, yeah, I'm the one that was blind. Okay. But now I see. Okay. Verse 10. Therefore said they unto him, how are thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man that is called Yahushai made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind, right? So they brought him to the high priest of, this, of the Jews of that day. Okay, and it was the Sabbath day when Yahushua made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received this sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of the Most High, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Talk about Yahushua. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them, right? So you had some who said, Man, this guy got to be of the, of, of the Lord. How can he do these miracles? Okay. Verse 17 They say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind, right? So now they say, ah, oh, we think you're trying to pull a trick here. You, you was never blind, okay? That he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, is this your son who you say was blind, was born blind, Okay. So now we we'll go back into that word and see if it's the same word. Let's see here. Black. Born. Same word. Geneo. Right? Same definition. Procreate. Father by extension of mother. Bear, beget, be born. Okay? So it's the same word. All right? So now let's go back and finish this out. Right, right here in verse 19. And they, they asked him, saying, Is this your son who ye 
say was born blind? How then doeth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. Like nothing led up to his blindness. Like, uh, I don't know, he fell down and bumped his head when he was 10 and, you know, he lost his sight. Other than that, he, he was seeing fine for those first 10 years. No, he was born blind. You see? Verse 21, but by what means he now seeth, we know not, or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents, because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Mashiach, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Okay? And they asked him, and he told them. And they thought the Jews did, they would get a different answer. Okay? But the parents confirmed that he was blind. And in this chapter, the neighbors confirmed that he was born blind. You see? But the whole point of it was to prove when the disciples asked, what did this man do or his parents that he was born blind because they knew and understood regeneration or reincarnation, all right? Some things are just not meant for certain people to get, all right? So give all praise to water, God by Shem Yahushua, you know, for opening up your eyes and your ears that you can understand this gospel, okay? So let's go over to Matthew 16, 13, and it reads, when Yahushua came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am, that I, the son of man, am? Salakia. And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Stop right there. Again, proving the point that in ancient times, we believed in reincarnation. Okay. All right, hundreds of years passed between these prophets and when Yahweh was on earth. Okay, so they still they couldn't be hanging around. All right, couldn't still been hanging around. Obviously, you see. Going on, it says he saith unto them, "But whom say ye that I am?" And Simon Peter answered and said, "Thou art Mashiach, the son of the living power." How shall I answer and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever Thou shalt loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. Then Charles see his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Yahweh Shai, the Mashiach. Okay? So, through the Spirit, Peter answered him as to who he was or he is. Okay? But again, speaking to the fact in verse 14 that he was one of the prophets. Right? Reincarnation. This is Timothy 4, so like it, 2 Timothy 4 and 3, and it reads, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Right? And so that young man still, okay, <clears throat> at least at this point, you know, Lord may have mercy on him and wake him up. Who knows, right? But listening to all those, and I and I believe him to be a blended Israelite. You know, like he said, he listened to Sakari, he listened to Hoi, and this one and that one, and okay. And then he's trying to put his own spin and interpretation on what he's reading. Okay, that will never work. All right. 
going to get one more and we'll wrap it up. This is 1 Peter 2 and 1, and it reads, Therefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Right? So right off the gate, homeboy wanted to know the deepest things, okay, in which re reincarnation is not deep. It's, it's easy to see, but you got to have the eyes to see it. Okay? But no question on what do, what do I have to do to be saved? He didn't ask that. Right? He began to philosophize and give us his thoughts on what he thinks each scripture means. I don't see it as that. I see it as this. This is what I believe, or this is what I think. This is how I feel. You know, that's what we heard for 45 minutes. All right. So with that, anyway, you know, just, just another example, okay, uh, of the Most High showing that not, not all Israel is Israel, okay. All right. So it's a blessing to have this truth. All right. Guard it with your life, man. Okay, with that, I'll close right there, giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem Yahushua, Bashem Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles, another great millstone. Shalom to the hopeful elect. I'll see you all again real soon with another lesson, Lord willing. Shalom.